Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever in the world you are. Welcome to the daily Bible study for the Selang Church of Christ. If you have been to our building, you know where we are. If you've never been to our building, we are located in Bayan, North City proper of Selang, Cavite, Philippines, which puts us about 30 miles south of Ninoy Aquino International Airport. We are glad that you are with us today, and we hope that our study of God's word is of benefit to you. As always, we start with prayer requests. Ronald Lynn, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Um, Thanksgiving, sir, for all the blessings that we received and the guidance that we received every day and the good health and enlightenment for my brothers, Ramses and Raiden, and praying also for the competition of my brother, um, Rainiel. Joseph, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Um, prayer request, uh, good health and guidance for my family and for, for everyone. Okay. Uh, Ms. Larissa? Morning, everyone. Uh, good health and safety for everyone. Okay. <laughs> Right dropped off. He's back. Okay. Uh, Miss Wilma? Uh, same, sir, with my sister in law. Any news on that front? Uh, okay. Miss Giselle, good morning. Good morning. Prayer request? Unmute, please. Good morning, sir. Uh, safety for everyone, and thanks for the blessing. Okay. Rolick, you're keeping notes. We'll come back to you. Roxanne, good morning. Yes, sir. Um, good morning, and good morning, everyone. Um, Thanksgiving for all the blessing and guidance for me and for my daughter. Enlightenment for my sister-in-law and my brother. And praying for a good result for the check-up tomorrow of my um, stepmother. Stepmother, okay. Julie, good morning. Everyone, um, continues praying for my sister's job, hoping that she can start as soon as possible. Okay. Fred? Can you hear me okay? We can. Okay. Um, nothing today. Say again. I said, I said nothing uh, today. Okay, very good. Seth, good morning. Can't hear you, Seth. Oh. There you go. Am I clear now, sir? You're a little dim, but you're coming in. Go ahead. Okay, sir. Uh, good morning, everyone. I would like to request to have a protection and safety and good health for everyone also. Okay, very good. Cora? Prayer. Good morning, all. <laughs> Prayer request for Pedro and Glenn B. Danilo and Enlightenment 4K. Okay. Miss Elaine, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, who are we praying for enlightenment for? Sorry, sir. We prayer requests. I pray prayer request um guidance for my family and good health and um enlightenment for Irima. Rama, that's right. Rama. Yes, for Rima. Irma. I think it's R E M A, sir. R I S R I M. Irma. Okay. Rima. Rima. Oh, Rima. Rima. Okay. Rolick, we had a prayer request last week for you. How are things working out? 
unmute, please. Uh, sir, uh, uh, it's better than uh, last week. That's a praise then. Glad to yes, hear sir. it. Yes, uh, sir. The prayer is uh, working, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Raleigh, give us a prayer, please. Let us pray. Faithful Father, uh, we begin today by giving you thanks. Your love endures forever. It never fails. So there, there are many ways in which we have failed. We have exceeded the supply of your mercy and grace. Lord, we thank you for revealing yourself to us through your word. Heavenly Father, as we open the Bible today, we pray that you will would hear your voice. We ask for your Holy Spirit would be at work lord god we pray for our uh, the one that you will use to uh to spread your message lord god and uh lord we, we pray that uh we must uh that we can understand what is our word for us lord god uh we pray for after uh for our guidance and enlightenment for her brother, Lord God, uh, we pray for uh, Joseph, uh, good health and guidance for everyone. Lord God, uh, we pray also for Adelarisa, good health and safety for everyone, Lord God. We pray for Adelarisa, my sister, for uh, better recovery. We pray also for Adelarisa, uh, safety and guidance for everyone, Lord God, good health. We pray for Adorixa, Adoroxan, uh daughter uh, give, uh, and give her guidance and a good result for our staff mother, Lord God, for her, for her medication. Lord God, we pray also for Seth, uh, protection and good health for everyone. Uh, we pray for uh, Julie, for uh, her sister job. Lord God, we pray also for Mom Cora, uh, for Brother Pedro, Sir Glendy and Danilo, Lord God, we pray for enlightenment for Kay and uh, Straylene. Uh, we pray for his guidance and good health for the family. And also, God, we pray for enlightenment for Rima. Lord God, uh, this is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Good morning, everyone. Let's open our Bibles, please, to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. And verse 5. Ronald Lynn, start us off, please. Galatians chapter 4, verse 5 says, To redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. Redeem us from the law. That's what the message, that's been the, in case you haven't noticed it, that's been the entire message of the book of Galatians up to this point. Jesus Christ, hold on, we got an audio issue here. Let me see if I can do something about it. What works? Just a moment. Uh, there you go. Got it. Uh, Galatians chapter 4 verse 5 and what we've noticed here is the entire book has been really about redeeming us from the necessity of keeping the Levitical or Mosaic law because we've been justified by God, God's grace. Uh, give us Hebrews chapter 9 verse 12. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 12. Joseph? Hebrews Chapter 9, verse 12. He entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, though securing an internal redemption. He has redeemed us from the sin that was demonstrated by mankind's inability to keep the Mosaic law. This redemption of sin 
meant redemption from our efforts to try and keep a earthly law perfect and our efforts to atone for our sins through good works. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And we saw that in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. The word redeem is really a metaphor that finds its earthly meaning in one of two sources. But Israel was in captivity from which they could not deliver themselves. And God redeemed them by his grace since they could not redeem themselves. They could not buy their own way out of slavery. Let's go to Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. And start us in verse 13. Larissa. Fifteen. Okay. Exodus chapter fifty. Uh, verse chapter thirteen, verse fifteen. I like that. Uh, fifteen thirteen. Ah, uh, fifteen thirteen. Uh, sorry. Chapter fifteen, verse thirteen. Okay. You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. 14, Wilma. 14. The peoples have heard, they tremble. Pangs have ceased in the inhabitants of Felicia. Okay. 15, please, Giselle. Uh, 15. Now are the chiefs of Adams dismayed, trembling ceases the leader of Moab. All the inhabitants of Canaan have melted away. Okay. Um, good job. But I want to point out he, the name of these places are Edom, Edom. Moab, and, Moab. Can and Canaan. Mm -hmm. Uh, there, we will learn these as we go by. Verse 16, Raleigh. Verse 15. 16. Uh, verse 16. Fear and dread shall fall upon them. By the greatness of thine arm, they shall be still as a stone. Tell thy people pass over, O Lord. Tell the people pass over, which thou hast purchased. So the they, people were purchased or redeemed by God. And the reason why is because they could not redeem themselves from the slavery in Egypt. Uh, during Roman times, a slave could not deliver himself, but he could find freedom if somebody else paid the redemption price. If somebody else redeemed them. And for this freedom, whatever the source of the metaphor that Paul has in mind, the thought is the same. We were in captivity. Why were we in captivity? Because of our own sinfulness. We could not gain freedom by earning it, by meritorious works of the law or by perfect law keeping, because we are all dysfunctional. Uh, give me Romans chapter 3 and verse 10. Romans chapter 3 and verse 10, please, Roxanne. Romans chapter 3, verse 10. As it is written... None is righteous, no, not one. How many? None. None. And 323, Julie, do you know it by heart yet? For all have sins and fall short of the glory of God. 
we cannot find atonement or freedom in our meritorious works. Therefore, the blood of Jesus bought us out of captivity. And we can see this in Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. Julie, grab that one for us, please. Acts chapter 8, verse 28. No, yeah, 20, 28. Ah. Okay, Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God which he obtained with his own blood. How was the blood purchased? By his own blood. With the blood of Christ, right? Yeah. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7, Cora. Ephesians, Colossians, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, verse 7, seven. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, it says, In him we have redemption through, the, through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. So we have redemption, but we have redemption through the blood of Christ. That's not something we earned. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 12. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12, Seth. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12 says, He entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, right. thus securing an eternal redemption. Securing an eternal redemption for us. Going back to Galatians chapter 4, verse 5, those that were under the law, Paul is discussing the situation really. We might think when we say those under the law that he's primarily addressing uh, the Hebrew or Israelite people, and he may be, but he He's also addressing the Gentiles. Not only was the Jew under the curse of not being able to perfectly keep the Mosaic law, the Gentiles were also under the curse of the law themselves. Both were in bondage to the law. We receive the redemption as sons, but as many of them, you know what? Give me John chapter 1 and verse 12. John chapter 1 and verse 12. Fred? It's John chapter. One verse twelve. Mm -hmm. Okay, is everybody there? Yes. John chapter one verse twelve reads, "But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God." We can become children of God through Jesus Christ. That's what John 1 12 says. We can also take a look at Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 5. Elaine, Ephesians 1 5. Ephesians 1 5. Chapter 1, verse 5. Good. Okay. It says here, he predicted. He predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. This adoption, 
this adoption is based on our faith, obedient faith in Jesus Christ, not a meritorious obedience to the law. The Gentiles, therefore, must not seek to return to the superstitions and their false religions of fear and bondage, nor must the Jews return to depending on the Mosaic law that brought no justification. Both Jews and Gentiles knew that they could not keep the law perfectly. They would be returning to the bondage of a false religion. Romans chapter 8 and verse 15. Romans 8 and 15. Amen. Romans chapter 8 verse 15 says, For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Now, I'm afraid sometimes Abba, Father gets missed in our popular culture. Uh, this might be considered dear daddy if we were speaking English. The reason why that's important is because it's delivered us from the fear. Bondage to, brings fear because we always know that we've broken the law. However, liberty brings joy and peace. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 6, Joseph. Ephesians 4, 6. Galatians 4, 6, sorry. Galatians 4, verse 6 says, And because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Abba, Abba, Abba. Father. Because you are sons. Because they were sons. We are sons. The Holy Spirit is given was given to them and is given to us. The wording of this verse might seem to indicate that Paul is referring to miraculous gifts they received by the grace of God through the laying on of hands. The text states that the sonship preceded their receiving the uh, gift of the Spirit. However, this is not related to the miraculous gifts. Uh, let's take a look at Acts chapter 8 and verse 18. Acts chapter 8 and verse 18. Larissa? Acts chapter 8, verse 18. <clears throat> Now, when Simon saw the Spirit was given through the laying on the apostle hands, he offered them money. He offered them money. He's going to try to buy miraculous gifts. Let's take a look at Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. Start us in verse 1, please, Wilbur. Acts chapter 19, verse 1. And it happened that while Ap Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. There he found some disciples. Okay. And verse 2, please, yourself. Verse 2, and he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? And they said, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Okay. There is a Holy Spirit. Verse 3. And he said unto him, unto what were ye baptized? And they said unto John Baptist. Yeah. 
this is not the topic and it's not certainly the point of what I'm going to, but this is a question that has come up in one of my other studies. Let's pay attention here. Verse four, please. Roxanne. In verse 4, and Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is Jesus. That's 4, right, uh, Roxanne? 5, Julie. And verse 5, on hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse 6, Cora. Verse 6, it says, When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Okay, now I have a question for you. Was, has, was re-baptism, we understand baptism, but was re-baptism ever performed in the New Testament? Say it again. No. Was rebaptism ever performed in the New Testament? No. No. Say it again, Fred. No. Yes. No. Okay. Then explain to me Acts chapter 19, verses 1 to 6. Well, the uh, in Fij if he used to say there's one baptism there that is, is applicable to salvation so before christ uh died because uh john's baptism was applicable after christ died and was raised that was no longer applicable yes. so there was now those who were to be baptized in the name of jesus christ well now i have a question for you let's have this conversation because what I find is in, in Acts chapter 19, verses 1 to 6, is someone who was baptized under the wrong covenant or for the wrong reason. What would be an inappropriate reason? Well, uh, if you lack the ability to be baptized, Mark 16, 16, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Well, if you are infantly baptized as a Catholic, does that is that the one baptism? No. No. But so you are, we're baptized twice, once incorrectly and once correctly. If you had been involved in a Calvinistic dogma where like, they baptized for membership in the church or as they might say, an outward sign of an inward change that has already occurred. Well, you're not in keeping with the instructions that were given in Acts chap chapter 2, verse 38. All of you should be baptized to the remission in the name of the... Back up, Ernest. You can do this. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Be baptized for the remission of your sin. But if you were not baptized for the remission of your sins, instead you were baptized for membership in a church... That's incorrect. I believe I believe that baptism should be done under the new covenant of Christ to tie back into what you said, Fred. So this is an issue. Right. So and 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 so the perspective is I don't see that as a rebaptism because the first baptism wasn't really a biblical one. So it's to me it's like entering into a false contract. You don't okay. do a recontract. You do the contract correctly one time. In, in, in one time, whether it okay. is after the fact that you did something incorrectly, then you do it correctly once. So that's the perspective that I don't see, see it as a rebaptism. I see it as a, doing it properly in the first place. Okay, I, I will. I will go along with that assertion because. This is sometimes becomes a vocabulary game, if you will. Um, like the other baptisms, like a tradition of men, which is Mark seven in seven. vain, right? Which is vain. So 
doing it again, it's doing it correct doing the it first correct. time. The first time. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, the same receiving the gift of non-miraculous gift. We receive the gift of salvation at our immersion. And in Acts chapter 19, they were immersed and then the spirit indwelt them with their salvation. I don't believe that this was a miraculous uh, baptism or a miraculous indwelling of the spirit because I don't see any evidence of that in Acts chapter 19. Although most assuredly within the first century, the apostles did have miraculous abilities. And we can also see this in Romans chapter eight and verse 16, Romans chapter eight and verse 16. And uh, I forgot whose turn it is. So we'll just pick Raleigh. Uh, let's pick. What was you. the last one? You were the last one? Seth. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 8, verse 16 says, yes. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Very good. This, who bears witness to our results, to our being children of God, the Holy Spirit, right? Now, this is not a result of the works of the law. It's the grace of God. We did not earn this miraculous healing, nor did we earn the right to have the indwelling of the Spirit. The Spirit was freely given, as was the indwelling. Uh, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 8, Fred, Matthew 10, 8, please. And verse eight. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, okay. cast out demons. You receive without pain, give without pain. Give without pain. Um, obviously, Matthew chapter 10, verse 8 is in reference to the miraculous gifts among gift amongst the people of the first century then there is power in paul's argument in the galatian church not only did they freely receive miraculous gifts the gifts becoming a confirmation of the truth the gospel that they had received mark chapter 16 and verse 20 they actually don't go there hebrews chapter 2 verse 3 hebrews chapter 2 verse 3 elaine Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3, Paul. Yes, please. Okay, um, it says here, He is the regions of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So where is Jesus Christ now? In heaven, right? Yes. yes. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4, please run away. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4 says, While God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gift of the Holy Spirit distrib distributed according to his will. Okay. One of the things that I think is a cause of... Uh, some misunderstanding uh, is that people tend to think that the age of miracles is still with us, and it's not. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 8. Joseph, start us there, please. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Hebrews of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Where'd my brain go? Yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. Love never ends. As for the prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. 
Verse nine, Larissa. Verse nine, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. Verse 10. 10. Well, Verse 10, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. Once we have the completed word of God, the miraculous okay. gifts that were designed to prove that they were teaching or preaching the word of God, that's going to pass away. The spirit confirmed the spoken word. We saw that in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Uh, he also confirmed their belief by miraculous works amongst the people. Uh, we can see that in 1 Corinthians 14, 22. 1 Corinthians 14, 22. Just... Unmute, please. Uh, chapter 14, verse 28. 22. Uh, 22. 22. Thus, tongues are signed not for believers, but for unbelievers, while prophecy is a sign not for unbelievers, but for believers. Okay. So we see that there were miraculous gifts, most assuredly. Uh, the term Abba Father, I tried to explain that. We might see a better explanation in Mark chapter 14, verse 36. Mark 14, 36. Raleigh. Everything's possible for you. Mark chapter 14, verse 36. 36. Yes, please. Okay, sir. And he said, Ava, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me, nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. So, when we pray to God, let's try that again. Jesus Christ here was praying right what was he praying for for the will of the father he was actually he had a request what was his request uh is this the is this the one uh that he was in the uh garden garden, garden. of eden uh, garden uh, of yeah yes. the garden of, okay Chichimani. i think he was praying that if only God will will discontinue that thing, that's going to happen to him. But he knows that it will not happen. And so he was praying for God's, God's, uh, God's will. So do when we pray, we're asking for things a lot of times, correct? We have to stay yielded to the spirit of God. God may not answer our, he will always answer our prayers. But the answer is not always going to be yes. Yes, no, and not right now are all answers that God might give us, right? How are we doing on time here? I can't see the clock. Oh, 41. 41. Okay, guys, we will pick up tomorrow, Galatians chapter 4, verse 7. Galatians chapter 4, verse 7. Everybody All have right, a blessed day. All right, take care. All right, take care. Bye, guys. Bye -bye. Take care, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye, Mom, Cora. Friend.